this is the IBM 5160 that I bought. And I've got the uh, it opened up here and I removed most of the cards to help with uh, debugging um, the power on self test. It's just got the uh, MDA graphics card in there now. And uh, there's a pile of other cards here. This one is uh, Scan Doubler. This one is an IBM Async card, serial port. This one is the uh, hard drive controller. This is the floppy drive controller. This is a generic serial parallel card. This is a AST5251-11. It's for connecting to uh, IBM mainframes, I think. Look at the size of that uh, RISC chip in the, uh, in the middle of the board there. It's a big one. And this is the RAM card, which has 384K of RAM. It also has a a serial port and I read on the internet that uh, it has a parallel port as well which I guess connects to this here and it also has a battery so I'm wondering if that has a real-time clock. I've got the keyboard port connected to my Arduino and the Arduino is connected to a modern computer. The Arduino is pretending to be a keyboard or it's more specifically it's pretending to be the uh, testing device, uh, manufacturing test device that IBM used in their factories to load code onto the uh, the machine um, uh, as it was being manufactured. And the MDA card is wired up just through a few resistors there and a, a, a transistor to uh, a composite uh, input on a TV. And let's see what happens when we turn it on. And you can see how quick that booted there. That's because it didn't do most of the power on self test tests. Um, the uh, manufacturing test happens very early in the boot sequence. Let's take a closer look at what's on the screen here. These are Characters from the uh, MDA uh, MDA card. Um, I set up the uh, program, uh, the manufacturing test program, to write some things on the you know, put some things into screen memory, and set up the CRTC values so that uh, it outputs frequencies compatible with a TV. Uh, normally, the, uh, this MDA card outputs 18.25 uh, kHz horizontal, 50 Hz vertical. I've changed it to 60 Hz vertical and 15.34 kHz horizontal, I think it is. Um, as you can see, there's some uh, uh, kind of strange color artifacting going on there. Um, which is uh, maybe a little surprising because the uh, MDA card uh, obviously doesn't generate any kind of uh, uh, color burst uh, that the TV would, would use to identify a color signal. The reason it's happening is because also on this breadboard I've got a little Colpitz oscillator and a crystal that uh, uh, generates the uh, NTSC uh, uh, color carrier frequency and uh, that is um, uh, the, the, the signal in that is, is powerful enough to leak over into the uh, uh, the wires uh, connecting the TV so the TV sees a color carrier signal continuously 
at a very low level, which is enough to disable the color killer circuitry and uh, interpret the uh, interpret the signals it's seeing as uh, as color signals. Um, now the MDA signal is not in sync with the uh, uh, color carrier signal at all, so the, the phase relationship uh, between the um, uh, displayed image and the, and the color carrier is completely random. So the colors here are, uh, are, are, are completely uh, random and arbitrary. Um, if I just touch the crystal, I'm not sure if it's heat or pressure that does it, but um, the I can change the phasing relationship slightly, I'm not sure. I disabled the pulse there for a moment. But if I if I squeeze the uh, the crystal, then you might be able to see that the uh, that the frequency is changing slightly, and that's changing the phasing patterns. There it might be a bit hard to tell on the camera. And if I remove the crystal altogether. Oops, no, it's broken. If I remove the crystal altogether, then it goes into the black and white signal that we would expect to see, and that does actually make the text a little more legible. Okay, we've got a loose connection here somewhere. So as you can see, the top half of the screen is um, it, it, it's not quite uh, syncing properly. Um, I think that the levels of my sync signals are not quite right. Um, I just messed about with it uh, 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 until I got a, a half reasonable picture. Um, but I think what's happening is the uh, horizontal and uh, vertical sync signals are being awed together at least to some extent so the horizontal uh, sync is not being recognized during the vertical sync and uh, so the, the top half of the screen it uh, spends trying to get the, uh, uh, the horizontal sync uh, back to its, uh, its normal position but the bottom half of the screen is quite stable. So that's about it 